Today's topic is Practical Applications of Color Theory. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Way Pan. I'm Cal. And I'm Sunny. This video supposes that you know about color theory, color harmony, and color psychology. We've done two videos on these subjects. But that doesn't mean you won't get anything out of this one. We're going to do a short introduction so that you understand the concepts and then after that, we're going to break down why the Ultramarines, despite being the poster boys of Warhammer 40,000, the setting that defines Grimdark, seem like the good guys. Then we're going to break down how you can apply red, white, and blue, America, Russia, or Pepsi, in different ways to give different meanings. And finally, we're going to talk about why green and purple, but more specifically, this green and this purple combination is the bad guy colors. Let's get her done. Introduction. Now that you understand color harmonies and color psychology, we can finally get to how color psychology and design language is affected by combining various color elements. But first, a word about context. Biology and culture still have an effect. And this will change how people perceive certain color combinations. First, let's start off with a cross-cultural or biological effect. Many people may have noticed that fast food restaurants use this color harmony, red, yellow, and white. But why? The reason is meat. Humans for the majority of their existence have been calorie starved. We are psychologically driven to find highly dense calorie rich food. Meat falls under that category. This is why these fast food chains and restaurants use this color harmony. Are they doing it consciously? Perhaps not. Are there secondary reasons? Yes, but if you can find a simple biological answer, take it. But are there other reasons to choose these colors in design language? 100%. Red has direct connections with appetite in color psychology as well as stimulation and yellow is connected with enthusiasm and happiness. So why wouldn't you want to use these traits when it comes to fast food? However, this is putting the cart before the horse. If a more simple explanation can be found like these colors are meat colors, we eat meat, that is probably the explanation rather than that of a breakdown of people's emotional responses to colors. Cultural influence. Blue, red, and yellow, the primary color combination, with blue being the dominant color, red as the minority color, and yellow as the accent color. This has become the defining way of showing, hey, this is the good guy. So much so that consciously or not, this is why Ultramarines, since the fourth edition in 2004, and perhaps before that, have become the poster boys for the Warhammer 40,000 universe. And you can all thank one person for this particular color harmony becoming the defining color harmony for the good guys. Superman. For almost a hundred years now, he has been a part of the Western cultural zeitgeist. So much so that many people think that he's boring. However, his impact goes well beyond the pages of the comic books. It is impossible to ignore his influence, or foolish at least. While there are many other heroes who followed his color harmony, this is likely due to his influence, wanting to show instantly that these are the good guys and gal. So once again, be careful, be mindful of cultural and cross-cultural biological influences on color harmonies. You might be tapping into something deeper, but that can be a good thing. The Ultramarines. Warhammer is the epitome of grimdark. So why are their poster boys looking so heroic, looking like they're coming straight out of a comic book? Part of it is cultural, the legacy of Superman, as we just explained. However, this particular color harmony did become the default for the good guys for a reason. Blue, red, and yellow. This is the triadic color harmony. There's a specific reason to why blue is chosen to be the majority color, red the minority color, and yellow the accent color. Blue is the world's most popular color on average. This is one of the reasons why it is chosen to be the dominant color. Blue is seen as dependable, trustworthy, and competent. However, it 
does have negative traits. For example, it's seen as passive. It's seen as cold. It's seen as depressing. And this is exactly why red is chosen as the minority color to cancel out those negative traits. Red is the color of action, power, and violence. Red's negative traits are dominated by the blue. The uncontrolled anger, the rage, the violence is softened by the blue. Yellow is an attention-grabbing color. When used as an accent color, it doesn't have that same level of hyperactivity that it does if you use it in large amounts. And when you use it as an accent, it brings attention to the parts where you want to see. Being an accent color doesn't have the same level of impact as the dominant or minority color. Thus, with yellow, only its strongest psychological element remains, which is energy. As you add colors, the color associations can be added or removed. And this is the same for positive and negative traits. Information can be lost in the noise. Once you start adding colors, things can become mixed up and muddled. So you may have less associations, positive and negative traits, as you add more and more colors. Let's take a look at blues color associations. Color associations. Dependable, stable, cool, competent, and communication. Are any of these traits affected by red? Yes, stable and cool. Are any of these traits affected by yellow? Yes, yellow also affects stability. Does any of red's color associations not clash with blues? Yes. Power. Accent colors aren't as powerful as minority colors. Does yellow have any themes that don't clash with blue? Mm, energy? Is it powerful enough to come through as its own color association? No, it wouldn't. Does energy add to any of red's color associations? Yes, action. Let's review. What have we lost? Stability and cool. What have we gained? Power and action. What associations remain unaffected? Dependable, competence, and communication. Communication doesn't feel like it fits anymore. Yeah, it seems like one of those meanings that has been lost in the noise. What does the association list look like now? Dependable, competent, power, and action. In that order? Yes, in that order. Let's look at... Positive traits. Loyal, honest, attentive, confident, and trustworthy. Does any of red's negative or positive traits clash with these blue positive traits? Yes, negative traits of red clash with blue's attentive and trustworthy positive traits. Does any of red's positive or negative traits reinforce any of blue's positive traits? Yes, red's positive traits reinforces blue's attentive and confident positive traits. Are there any positive traits from red that don't clash with blue's positive or negative traits? Yes, strength. Does any of yellow's positive or negative traits clash with blue's positive traits? No. Does any of yellow's positive or negative traits reinforce any of blue's positive traits? Yes, confidence. Are there any positive traits from yellow that don't clash with either blue's positive or negative traits? Yes, confidence is a positive trait of yellow. Let's take a quick review. Have we lost any traits? Trustworthiness. Have we gained any traits? Strength. What do the positive traits look like now? Competent, loyal, honest, attentive, and strength. And do you feel that attentive still feels like it fits? Not as much. So we should remove it, but keep them in that order. Is that right? That's right. Now let's look at... Negative traits. Sensitive, self-deprecating, stubborn, depression, and cold. Does any of red's positive or negative traits affect any of these negative traits? Every single one of them, except stubborn. Does any of yellow's positive or negative traits affect these negative traits? Yes, cold. Does any of red's positive or negative traits reinforce blue's negative traits? No. What about yellow? Yellow's anxiety reinforces blue's depression. Would any of red's negative traits be powerful enough to overcome blue's? Yes, violence. But I also believe that uncontrolled anger would become cold anger or resentment. 
Would any of yellow's negative traits be powerful enough as an accent color to overcome both red and blue's negative traits? No. What does the list of negative traits now look like? Stubborn, violence, depression, and cold anger. So perhaps taking a look at this color harmony, the reason why we think that this is the heroic color combination is because as a society, we value these traits, both positive and negative. Yeah, when it comes to the positive, it seems we really like people we can depend on, people who seem like they're competent, someone who has power behind their actions. And these aren't even the positive traits, they're just the associations, the things we think of most when we see this particular color harmony. When it comes to positive traits, it seems that confidence is the one that our societies seems to value the most. Yeah, and especially with the pairing with red and yellow, it really makes the whole color combination reinforce that. Even with the negative traits, sometimes these are actually celebrated. Yeah, like heroes are often seen as stubborn as well because they're so righteous about what they want to see in the right things done. And there isn't a single film that celebrates violence. Yeah, because superheroes are totally passive people. Yep. So let's do a final breakdown. Blue, red, yellow color associations. Dependable, competent, power and action. Positive traits. Confident, loyal, honest and strength. Negative traits. Stubborn, violent, depression and cold anger. It can be seen once you start using multiple colors in a color scheme or color harmony that you're going to have less associations, less positive traits and less negative traits. It's because the more you add to the mixture, the more they get drowned out in the noise. On to our next topic. Red, white and blue. Why did we choose red, Um, white and blue? America, Russia or Pepsi? The reason is almost half of the flags that exist that I know of use red, Red, white white, and blue. blue. This is true. And the reason why we wanted to do this is so that you can see how color psychology affects things practically. Red, white, and blue is a very common color combination. But let's take a look at how the 60-30-10 rule changes the meanings of each composition. But just before that, let's actually take a look at the color harmony that they would use and let's take a look at the color psychology behind each of these. Orange and teal. It's a common complementary color harmony used in films. But if you make it a little bit... Sang it. Yes, it becomes adjacent complementary red and blue. And we have to take note that white is not considered as part of the color harmony because it's a shade, so it doesn't affect it. White isn't a color because there is no wavelength of light associated with white. Instead, it reflects all colors equally. This might be why white has the weakest of all of the color psychologies. What I mean by this is it's the one that is most easily overpowered. Yes, because white has to become something. It is easily stained. Whereas red is probably the most powerful of all of the colors. It is the first color that we see when we are alive. It is the color of blood, which represents passion and vigor. Blue is a passive color, but that does not mean that it is a weak color. It is calm and strong and dependable. With that in consideration, white will have the least effect as an accent color. Dominant color, red. Minority color, blue. Will remove some of the negative traits, such as uncontrolled anger and tiring. But why? Blue's traits are that of dependability and stability. But it would also remove one of its positive traits, warmth, because blue is cold. Red's passion, not as intense because of blue's traits. So let's review. It would probably still have the following associations. Aggression and passion, though dialed back. And power. Positive traits. Strength and masculinity remain, but warmth, stimulation and excitement are reduced, if not removed. Negative traits. Ruthless, resentful and violence remain. However, 
Ruthless may be exaggerated because of Blue's coldness. Now let's take a look at what Blue's traits may have carried over. Dependable, stable, and competent don't clash with Red, but communication and cool do with Red's aggressive side. Positive traits. Loyal, honest, and confident. Once again, don't clash with Red, but attentive and trustworthy do clash with Red's excited, passionate, and tiring traits. However, loyalty isn't dominant enough to push against Red's less stable traits. Negative traits. Self-deprecation and stubborn don't necessarily clash with Red's traits. However, they aren't exactly in sync with them either. Depression, sensitive, and cold do clash quite badly and are drowned out by Red's traits. Before we add white as an accent, let's take a look at this as a two color harmony. Red, blue, color harmony associations. Aggression, passion, competent, powerful, and dependable. Positive traits. Strength, masculinity, honest, and confident. Negative traits. Ruthless, resentful, violent and stubborn. You may have noticed that you've lost both positive and negative traits in the overall accounting of this color harmony. Once again, once you start adding colors to the mix, you start muddling the message and information is lost in the noise. The more colors that are fighting for attention, the less impactful they will become. White accent. Almost all of white's associated traits are wiped out by the overpowering red and blue. However, some of its positive and negative traits may have come through. First, white complements both the positive traits of clarity. White reinforces the cold of the blue, but as an associated color, it still can't overpower the red. So indifference and distance are all that remain. Indifference reinforces blue's negative traits, but red's traits in general of action remain too powerful to overcome. So what does white add? It reinforces the ruthlessness of red, which was also complemented by the blue. Additionally, it removes the resentfulness of red because of its positive traits. Additionally, it reinforces the power of red. Finally, the naivete and distance of white de-emphasize the confidence of red. White isn't so much removing the masculinity of red, However, it has muddled the message enough that it can be removed. The meanings now become Red, blue and white color harmony Associations Aggression, passion, competence, powerful and dependable Positive traits Strength, confidence and honesty Negative traits Ruthless, violent and stubborn Red with white as a minority color White as a minority mostly amplifies meanings rather than removing meanings. White often adds a level of precision, so uncontrolled anger would likely become rage or hatred. White also adds the positive trait, clarity, and its negative trait of naivety makes it so the tiringness of red is removed. So let's review. The color associations of red are left intact, if not amplified. This is also true for its positive traits. The negative traits of uncontrolled anger is changed to pure rage or hatred and tiring is removed. Let us look at white traits that may have carried over. With the exception of purity, all of white's color associations come from it being unstained. Purity may be an amplifier for some traits and associations, but not a trait in of itself. Positive traits of healing and positive energy, ironically, don't clash with red, so they could be added. Negative traits of white almost all clash with red. However, indifference could become a trait changed by red, making it apathetic or callous, or perhaps even compartmentalization. So when using this, before adding the blue, we have an in this order Red-white color scheme associations Aggression, appetite, passion, power and love Positive traits Strength, warmth, stimulation, masculinity, healing and positive energy Negative traits Pure rage, compartmentalization, violence, 
ruthless, and stressful. You may have noticed some additional meanings were added and removed at the end. We removed excitement after some debate, but it could remain. Resentful became stressful in the negative category over resentful because the red and white combination often doesn't evoke excitement but rather worry, stress. You also may have noticed that this color combination may have ended with more positive meanings than negative and more meanings overall. Some color combinations will complement each other better than others, and not in the color harmony way, but adding meaning to both colors, color psychology or design language. Adding a blue accent. Adding blue as an accent isn't powerful enough to remove any meanings but it is strong enough to replace some and add some of its own. Blue traits of dependability and competence are strong enough to come through on their own. They don't remove any meanings through their strength, overpowering the white or blue, but instead muddle the meaning enough to replace them. Adding dependability and competence over appetite and love. Love could remain, but it is debatable. Red and white's color combination almost already adds confidence to its positive traits. Once you add blue, it is definitely there without removing anything. White's cold isn't the same as blue's, and all of blue's negative traits clash with red's. There is one thing that could be affected, which is the pure rage, turning it instead to that of hatred, as mentioned before. Red, white, and blue color harmony associations. Aggression, passion, power, dependability, and competence. Positive traits. Strength, warmth, confidence, masculinity, healing, positive energy, and stimulation. Negative traits. Hatred, compartmentalization, violence, ruthless and stressful. Blue with red as a minority color. As we noted earlier in the video, this color harmony has a major cultural stable. But blue, red, and white, as well as blue, white, and red, were also used as the colors of patriotic heroes during World War II, and that legacy remains. This is important to remember because it may affect people's perception of this color harmony. Red is a powerful minority color. As such, it is able to affect much more than white. Additionally, many of red's associations and traits clash with that of blues. Red's traits such as aggression, passion, warmth, and power will also reduce blue's stability and trustworthiness. However, it does reinforce blue's stubbornness. Red's strength and stimulation reinforce or complements blue's loyalty, confidence and honesty, while resentment amplifies Blue's depression. Traits like communication and attentiveness become muddled and lost in the noise. Now let's take a look at what red traits have carried over. All of red's color associations are intact except for love, which is lost in the noise. Red's positive traits complements well with blues, so strength, power and action are reinforced and excitement is lost in the noise. Red's aggressive nature is calmed by blue, so uncontrolled anger and tiring are reduced. However, that uncontrolled anger now becomes cold anger. Let's take a look at what the color profiles look like now before adding the white accent. Blue-red color harmony associations. Dependable, competent, power and action. Positive traits. Confident, loyal, honest, and strength. Negative traits. Stubborn, violence, depression, and cold anger. Adding a white accent. As mentioned earlier, white is easily overpowered and stained by other colors, making it have the weakest color psychologies. As an accent, not much of its traits carry through, but it serves as an excellent visual element to help contain and contrast and regulate the strengths of the blue and red colors. Why in this case would have either purity or clarity come through, which can also be thought of as precision. Blue, red, and white color harmony associations. Dependable, competent, power, and action. Positive traits. Confident, loyal, honest, precise, and strength. Negative traits. Stubborn, violence, depression, and cold anger. Blue with white as a minority. A quick note on blue-white color combinations. You're going to see a lot more meanings with them paired together. Why? Because both of them are stable and passive colors. 
Blues associations aren't affected by whites' associations in any way. While virginity could affect competence in the idea of someone is inexperienced, whites' other associations like purity and perfection counter that idea. Cleanliness carries over quite well, as well as clarity from whites' positive traits. However, hope doesn't quite fit this clinical look, but it could depend on other design elements. White reinforces all of blues' positive traits, but it does change and overcome some of its negative traits. Self-deprecating becomes indifference, perhaps better portrayed as apathy, and the combination of negative traits adds aloofness to the mix. Blue-white color scheme color associations. Dependable, stable, communication, cool, and competence. Positive traits. Clean, clear, loyal, honest, confident, attentive, and trustworthy. Negative traits. Cold, apathetic, stubborn, depression, and aloof. You may have noticed that this color combination has more positive traits than normal. This is due to these traits fitting together so well. And it doesn't so much add to the negative traits, but rather changes them. Adding a red accent. Red is quite a powerful color, but it doesn't have that power as an accent. Instead, it mostly removes meanings. While associations are quite solid and almost unchangeable, negative and positive traits are quite changeable. Clean and clear are lost due to the noise. White's hope is fueled by red's passion. So we add hope. Red's negative traits are overpowered by the blue-red combination. However, it does have some effect on the negative traits such as apathetic and aloof. Red is far too passionate to allow these traits to remain. So it becomes blue, white, and red color harmony associations. Dependable, stable, communication, cool, and competence. Positive traits. Loyal, hopeful, honest, confident, attentive, and trustworthy. Negative traits. Stubborn, cold, and depression. White with blue as a minority color. As noted before, blue and white pair together very well. The only association lost due to the staining of the white would be virginity, but it would add many of blue's associations, if not all of them. With white as the majority color, it allows its easily drowned out meanings to remain, taking all of blue's positive traits with the exception of attentive, because the white's purity drowns that out. The only thing that isn't almost completely combined is white's negative traits. Blue's negative traits don't travel over as well, with the exception of depression and cold. In addition, Blue's cool becomes cold, and this becomes not just a trait, but an association of this color combination. Blue-white color scheme color associations. Cold, purity, perfection, competence, innocence, simplicity, dependable, stable, and communication. Positive traits. Cleanliness, clarity, positive energy, healing, hope, loyalty, honesty, confidence, and trustworthy. Negative traits. Cold, empty, distant, indifferent, naive, and depression. For some of you who are 40k fans, I'm sure you're screaming out, WORLD EATERS! But the thing is, some of the times people choose those color combinations not based on their color psychologies, but instead they just pair well against red. Blood. With a red accent. A red accent here does a lot of work. Why? It muddles this very simple and elegant mixture. Innocence, simplicity, dependable, stable, and communication almost all get wiped out. But how can it have such an impact with such a small amount? Cleanliness was one of its positive traits, and that is why, because most of its meanings are removed through the message getting muddled. Clarity is also removed, ironically enough. Red doesn't clash enough with the other positive traits to remove them. The negative traits are barely any different. Only distant and depression are affected. Distant removed by red's passion, and depression becoming merely sadness or despondency. White, blue, and red color harmony, color associations. Cold, purity, perfection, and competence. Positive traits. Positive energy, healing, hope, loyalty, honesty, confident, and trustworthy. Negative traits. Cold, empty, indifferent, naive, and despondency. 
White with red as a minority color. Once again, there is a note on the cultural effects of this color combination. It is often used in our real world to denote that of medics, healers, and other such positive professions. Please remember that this culture has an effect. So if this combination seems unusually positive for red, maybe this is why. White simplicity and virginity associations are almost instantly removed by adding red. However, it doesn't add red's more negative associations. Indeed, it's more positive associations, passion, power, and love. With positive traits, it would usually remove the cleanliness. But because this color is heavily associated with healers and the need to be extremely clean, it remains. Clarity is also removed, but not due to red's power but it doesn't reinforce it, so it is removed as an easily destabilized trait. However, red does have quite an impact on the color's negative traits. Cold and empty are removed. Indifference is changed, if anything, and naivety may remain due to the same cultural associations, but instead it becomes naively hopeful. Red's traits of warmth and stimulation carry through. However, masculinity does not. Not the raw masculinity in all of its positive and negative forms, but both motherly femininity and fatherly masculinity with their respective traits come through. Paternal love. Negative traits are mostly drowned out by the white. However, this very much depends on the design. If it's a design that emphasizes violence, it takes it to the extreme. If it is neutral or indifferent in its design, ruthless becomes compartmentalization. Red, white, color scheme, color associations. Purity, perfection, innocence, passion, power and love. Positive traits. Healing, cleanliness, positive energy, hope, paternal affection, warmth and stimulation. Negative traits. Distant, indifferent, compartmentalization and naively hopeful. Some of you might be thinking of the white scars right now. However, how much red they use is closer to that of an accent. So the meanings are likely to change. In addition, they have distinctive patternings and symbols. As we mentioned in Meaningful Marines, theme comes before color scheme with a blue accent. Blue as an accent is not nearly as powerful as red, primarily because it is a passive color. Innocence is lost due to blue's muddling of the message. Blue's negative traits of coldness isn't enough to overpower red's warmth, but it is enough to lose stimulation due to the muddling of the message. Its negative traits aren't powerful enough to overcome white or reds, but does change a number of them slightly. So it becomes white red and blue color harmony associations purity perfection passion power and love positive traits healing cleanliness positive energy hope paternal affection and warmth negative traits calculated distance cold indifference compartmentalization and vainly hopeful Red, white, and blue have a lot of meanings, not just the ones that we've shown here. There is more depth to design language and color psychology, but we used what we showed in our in-depth color psychology video. Yes, I think something that's important to note is where you place some of the colors. Like for the final one with white, blue, and red, the red in the eyes brings out a sense of violence, hatred, or rage, something very aggressive. So placement of color also is something to take note of. Design language and color psychology help inform decisions. They don't, however, just mean that slap this percentage on and you will get the meanings that you want. Putting something in the wrong area can change meanings completely. Yes. Something I want to point out when we were making these Imcat Marines with the variations of the colors is that the blue head paired with the red eyes looked very much like Yondu from Guardians of the Galaxy and it gave it a very alien and evil look. And in designing all of those characters, that stood out to you despite having doing this combination yeah, many times. Yeah, exactly. These are things that you should be aware of. Now let's move on to our next topic. 
villainous purple and green. Now, early printing did have something to do with this particular combination becoming that of the villains. However, early movies didn't have the same limitations. They were able to use colors more freely. Now, this particular purple and green have a reason why they are villainous. Royalty. Rulership has its privileges, of course, but as the French say, it also has the noblesse oblige. The unwritten rules which say that if you are of noble descent, if you are of noble privilege, you must look out for your fellow man. And as the French have shown, if you uh, don't follow this rule, the consequences are somewhat dire. Rulership is historically more normal than democracy, and the democracy people talk about today is certainly infantile compared to the long history of rulership that humans are used to throughout history. However, we don't intend to be political. All we intend to do is point this out. This is why this particular combination is so toxic. Green is used to symbolize toxic substances as well as nature. So why does this seem so inoffensive when compared with this. The reason is all of these people are in positions of power. They have the privilege of power, yet they act like just punks with a grudge. They do not respect their noblesse oblige. They do not respect their people. They have the power, yet they do not use it responsibly. This color combination is the color combination of the tyrant, the person who has power, who does not deserve it. I know that a lot of these Disney villains who have this purple and green combination come from royalty or nobility, but I have also noticed some characters who are not of noble descent. So how do they fall into this category? Because they've got those positions of power. Right, like the shadow man from Princess and the Frog. All right, people come to him, people seek him as a man of wisdom. Yeah, okay, so he has the power to help people with his magic, but he's just ripping people off instead. Yes. Right. It's about the lack of noblesse oblige. Mm. It's about the fact that these people could be helping. There is nothing inherently wrong with power. It is how you use it. Yeah, and I think another thing is the emphasis on the toxicity of this particular behavior being emphasized by that green, the shales green specifically. Well, I'm not sure that it is actually shales green because when I took a look at it, it is brighter and more vibrant than shales green. But it still feels toxic like shales green. Oh yeah, no, 100%. You are 100% correct about that. This color combination is about the corruption of rulership, not necessarily royalty in particular, but this is where it comes from. Not necessarily nobility, just simply those with power misusing it. Yes, I guess the conclusion would be just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah, no, that would be 100% right. Well, we have a rule of rulership that might help you get your models painted each and every week. And what's that? Keep, Keep those, those brushes, brushes wet. Bye-bye. Hi guys, as you can see, we are currently a growing channel, but have you wondered how can I make it so that good channels come up? Well, there's a simple solution, share. Yes, if you share our videos, it reaches more people and we can grow even more from there and help more people with our videos. Sharing is essentially the secret behind the algorithm. Sharing is more powerful than any clicking the bell or any of that nonsense. And that's why we don't beg you for your subscription. We just hope that we have earned it. Yes. And if you feel that we have earned your subscription, please 
help us even more by sharing our videos to people you think would benefit from them. Thank you very much, and we hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.